and for the first time. No boring music theory. No boring music theory. No boring music theory. Hey, how are you doing? I'm Vladimir Uspensky, and that's the first talk in this new series, non-boring musical music theory. Today we'll talk about three basics, three main things, three main concepts. That's for my own opinion. Yeah. Uh, the whole series, the whole thing that I will talk about, it's only my experience, no, that's not only my experience, that's my experience based on classical theory and classical things, but the way I'm talking about it, it's my vision. And I want to share it with you because I think that it's very, very practical, this kind of vision. So the main three things that we will talk about today are Rhythm, sound, and phrasing. But before we start, I want to ask you to subscribe, subscribe to my channel, to put all that likes, and to check out my new release on Spotify, Apple Music, and all that uh, platforms. Thank you. Now let's go. So, what's about rhythm? I think rhythm is a kind of a mood, kind of vibe. You can compare it with your mood in uh, real day life, everyday life. Like when you come to some party that is already happening, uh, how, how people uh, see you? Are they smiling? Or with this guy we will have only more fun? Or are they like... Uh, like this boring, uh, this boring guy will fuck up all our party. Uh, so that's about the vibe and how you feel that vibe, w where from it comes. Also, we, we can think about vibe when we talk about collective uh, work or collective um, or about friendship, about doing something in. Uh, when, when you are with your friends or with your partners or with your colleagues, so you do something and if you're an adult person, so you know, you know that in different uh, combinations, with di different people, in different combinations of people, there are different vibes, definitely. And sometimes you can work and uh, feel full your uh, partners in, in this work and they give something to you, you give something to them, you do all your job only more, only faster, only more effectively and more in, in a more interesting way than you do uh, separately. So that's a good vibe, yeah, so that's something happens, not only you work good and other, another person, uh, other persons work good, no, you have something together, some vibration that goes in some similar way. That's how I think about rhythm. And if we go from those conceptions to the more practical things, let's see, like some example. Uh, let's take first some bad rhythm, okay? Bad rhythming. Let's take. That's bad rhythming, so we don't get what, what where is where is this groove part? No, no groove at all. Let's move on. Let's do it a little bit better. It's much better, I think. It's like already we feel something, but it's still pff, shitty because it's the small 
parts, we, we see that there are small nuances, small things, and uh, I don't care when I play it. About it. It's like I do this the same, and it's very aggressive, and it's not cool rhythm. Let's go on, do it better. Let's try. That's much better, yeah? You see? So I start to do this this part uh, with more rhythm and I try to make it shorter, yeah? And I'm trying to do it uh, with groove itself, only this already I'm trying to do with groove. And this also mm -hmm. I'm take, taking, uh, like, putting my attention here and trying to make it uh, the same, w w the parts that should be the same, I'm trying to do they exactly the same, and I'm trying to do this also with some rhythm feelings, and let's go on, let's do it even better, yeah? More, more parts. Let's do it very, very quiet. Cannot do it quite more quiet. It doesn't, it doesn't sound. So now we have this, this level, this volume level, and it's, it becomes our instrument already. This. This level, I mean, it's our instrument. And we have this super, this hard level. So we can now, we can do some parts of our rhythm, like this. More accented, so yeah, there. Or, for example, with this hand. You feel, feel the rhythm even after I finish play because there was groove, groove, some groove inside of this playing. Uh, and about rhythm, let's continue a little bit. We can do different rhythms and feel the same, the same tempo with, and maybe even uh, the same groove close to the same groove with very different rhythm like let's say like i was playing this yeah but let's play some different but close to that one for example <laughs> The groove, this rhythm feelings, a lot are about your breathing and your feeling uh, in a relaxed way. If you are not relaxed, your groove always will be shitty. And 
your rhythm. So before you start to do something, even if it's much, much more easier, easier than the, this thing that also was very basic. So if you start just doing this, before you start, my advice is to relax and to feel something like a kind of groove inside of you uh, to make some connection to what you are doing. So it shouldn't be automatically pushing of the buttons. That's not it. You're trying to make music. So you should try to do it. Even if it's slow and if it's just a boring exercise, you should not make it not boring. So do it with groove. about mood don't do this like that because if you don't want to do that don't do it at all don't do music if you want to become good in music then do it with, with a good mood because that will improve all your understanding and all your feeling of the music okay so that was the first part of our video rhythm. The second part is sound. Sound. That's a very important part. The music is. Uh, it can cannot exist without sound. Yeah, maybe you can transform it to some code and then fill it with with some different receptors. Like let's say, could Alien fill our music? I think yeah, sure, sure we can, we can recreate or they can recreate something that. Uh, uh, would transform music if they, they don't have ears, if they don't, uh, cannot listen, cannot hear, uh, let's say. Uh, so, but anyway, the, in our real world, not uh, fan, world of fantasies, so we, we, we listen, we hear music uh, using our ears and using those vibrations that goes through the air or if you put headphones like also your bones yeah so those vibrations could be different and those vibrations they give us some information yeah about uh, about the, the place or the person let's say the about person who created that sound that produced this wave so we've got information about that sound and was that a cool sound was that exact sound was was that sound the best sound possible for that moment or for that idea uh, or not that's what we get what 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 we get with this vibration and if the sound was not good then we feel that it's shitty. And that's, that's the, the, those sounds, that's like sounds of your language. If you cannot reproduce good sound, your language is also like, if you speak like this, and you, instead of improving, if you can improve that, and you say, I, I don't care if I speak like this, <laughs> I will understand, but if you can improve that and you just don't do that, uh, that 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 makes you a bad musician. If we go with this analogy, analogia, uh, that's it. Sound is the basic brick of your wall that you are going to, or your uh, your tower that you are going to build. This musical knowledge. Hour, let's see.
So sound, you should control your sound. Sound goes from your breathing. Sound, go, sound goes from your wish to make this sound, from your mood also, from your point of view, from your reason. Why do you do that sound? What for? Is that sound just to make or is that sound to make some art? Think about that. Your sound is, uh, I, th I think, I I'm doing that music more than 25 years and the sound is still what I'm working on and I, I think I will work for more, 25 years more on that. And the sound is a lot about control. If you can control how you sound, then you can change your sound uh, depending on the situation. So that's your sound should be weak, your sound should be full, your sound should have a lot of nuances. Like let's say I, I think you hear it. So I do vibrato and it it changes my sound if i just do this that's one thing but if i can do this it changes information that i give to you also like let's say i can do only uh, very hard uh, strong sounds that's too much and that's not, not not comfortable not cool at all so let's let's do it in a different way and then I do add some vibrato. I can add some bend, yeah? I think it's sometimes it's better to show than to speak. That's about sound, okay? So how you can improve your sound? Pay attention. Try to try to feel. Try to search for it. Try to listen yourself. Record and listen. Record and listen. Try to find sounds that you like from other, from from greats, from other musicians that you like because of the, of their sound so try to get it to take to make it your instrument don't make it your sound because that's their sound but try to make it a part of your instrument of your knowledge and then taking all those things and thinking about sound and feeling sound and improving sound you will get your own you will find your own sound that's it so that's the second part of today's video. And the last one is phrasing. Phrasing. What, what is that about? For example, pause, break. Break. Short break. Yeah, that changes uh, a way of how I uh, perform. Yeah, it, I, I was talking a lot, I was playing before, but then I do this break. You see, that's, that's a very important instrument. And that, that is a part of this language. When you start to learn phrases, you start to learn language. Before you were learning letters and words now you start to learn to use those words in different situation uh, situations you you hear different accents you understand that even if something is correct in some situations it's too long to say you, sh you should say you should use short forms 
etc. So phrasing is my favorite topic and uh, we definitely will do videos, three videos about each of those basics, yeah, about rhythm, about sound and about phrasing. And uh, phrasing is my favorite. What else could be a part of a phrase? Phrase could have some rhymes. Like I can say something twice, like really twice, you see? Or three times I can say something. Three times I can do it, really. Look, three times. That was three times or even four. Uh, we can go somewhere for some analogy and then go back or make some references or take uh, talk about one thing then go to very different direction and then after like let's say 10 or 20 minutes we f we get this thing that we were speaking before again there and uh, a lot of stand up uh, comedy guys use th this thing or uh, people who do some public speaking and in music we use that a lot and we can do some question and answer can we do that yes definitely but i i am i sure yes i'm sure but what do you think yeah do you think that we can do it yeah i think you can you think that we can do it that's answer and question and we can do it a lot really a lot in the music i'll show you maybe i'll show you because i think the video is quite big already this one so i'll show you in uh, in a video that i'll do later for this phrasing phrasing so phrasing is all how you speak how self-confident you are are you like this and I was speaking like this, for example, I could do the same video, the whole thing, speaking like this, you see, yeah? And like, do you think that you will still watch my video if I, I speak like this, uh, the whole video, but in or like this? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. So I, uh, it's about your mood also, like we were talking uh, before about your mood because if you do in some shitty mood some video and you're you're nerv nervous and everything is going through that video to to, to, the, to the people and if you're in the good mood that's what you are retranslating and your phrases changes change when you are in the good mood your phrasing the way of your phrasing on the instrument also changes. So you should find a way to be in, in a good mood always when you're playing music. If you're not, if, if you're already always in a good mood uh, when you're playing, that's perfect. But all those nuances be, changes your way of uh, how you're phrasing. When you relaxed when you remember about what we were talking for example right now your phrasing become more interesting you you choose phrases like with all those nuances you just you're not playing with your hands like blah, 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 blah. let's let's have some example and uh, finish this this lecture uh, i'm playing temptation rack i'm learning to play temptation rack there is a part like this. Let's see. Uh. Okay. Or like even like this. Uh, I, I wasn't preparing to play this. Sorry. So now I remember this, th those uh, notes much better because in the beginning you seen I was nervous and that that was making my music sh not so good. 
So now I'm more relaxed because I remember now the things. So I can move my shoulders and very important to start breathing. Okay. My phrasing, like it could be like very straight. more so softer like okay, let's say like this or it could have some shuffle feeling yeah oh sorry uh, or some swing feeling we should add uh, different accents, yeah? Oh, sorry. And, or even we can change it, like, look. Some beautiful. So that was it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you tomorrow. Thank you.